is going on YouTube? Jimmy House here. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. We got the seminar footage for you guys. If you and or anyone else that owns a gym are interested in having myself, Dawson, and Derek out for seminars, make sure to leave a comment down below or reach out to any of us on social media. We would love to do a seminar at your gym. Hope you guys enjoy. Ask away. Alan. I'm assuming you guys are taking on new clients because you're doing this? I, have, I usually don't go above 40 people. I'm at 38 right now. Okay. Um, I'm not opposed to taking on more people, but like I'm not, like me coming to the seminar, I wasn't here like, I got, I'm doing this to pick people up, you know? Okay. Like that wasn't the whole, just like, hey, I just wanna hang out with some friends and teach people some things. Like okay, that was cool. kind of the, if y'all wanna, wanna pay me, man, I, I don't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It never made it the same spot. I'm like 33, they're like, they're like 35, so. Okay. Jimmy, you are you taking on more people? <laughs> well, thank you for the Jimmy's, Jimmy's, now, Jimmy's now expanding more to online coaching. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy's yeah. probably the guy to ask, in all honesty. Yeah. Like, we're basically be, booked up. But that's fair. I think La Jimmy is moving. Yeah, Lawson, Lawson, Matt, and I are moving to Austin, in which case I'm going to be picking up the online coaching much more. So if interested, keep on the lookout. Um, I specify in lifting and uh, doing jujitsu and, and somewhat at a decent ability at both at the same time. So if interested, let me know. But other than that, any other questions? Thank you, Alan. <laughs> you hope my Filipino sales pitch, I appreciate it. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, so I see that you like lift and do jujitsu, and you work out like three or four times a day. What does your recovery look like? So I find that a lot of my recovery, you're, you're gonna have your obvious like sleep and nutrition, and everything like that cover, but I think a lot of the recovery has to do with what you're doing in the gym to be able to increase your work capacity to take such an intense training schedule. But on top of that, like, a lot of the recovery that we talk about comes from like, oh, like, I'm really sore from this, or it takes me a long time to warm up from this. Well, after working with Dawson and him implementing a lot of the ATG, like knees over toes stuff, that, that encourages your body to build strength and long ranges of motion, basically finding a way to unlock mobility in any given direction, that was the biggest thing that helped me with my recovery, per se, because I didn't have to recover as much. So when I was back in powerlifting, doing only deadlift and only squat, not giving a cent of attention to my hip flexors, my rotator cuff or my neck or my spine or what have you, then recovery was much, much, much more of a, of a problem because I was doing so little in the gym to help my body overall function well, if that makes sense. So I think the aspect of recovery that we don't think about is what we can do in the gym to help us recover faster when we're at home because of the fact that like we don't need to do as much to recover. If your nutrition is on your point and your rest is on point, then I think the main lagging factor in that is like what aren't we doing in the gym that's like, or what are we doing in the gym that's like making it to where we have to think about recovery as much as we do, right? Because the body's gonna do the aspect of recovery very naturally. So like if the if recovery is something that you're having trouble with, like maybe look at your training program, what you're doing too much of or lacking thereof, and then start to work on those missing pieces and you might find that your recovery aspect becomes a lot better. For example, like if I'm going to train pro wrestling in the morning, I'm about to do a bunch of sprinting and jumping and stuff like that. I don't typically have to go into that with any sort of warm up. I pop my back a couple times and I'm pretty much good to go. A lot of that came from the progression that I saw from working with Dawson, a lot of the mobility stuff that I now have that I don't have to put in an excessive warm up, but put in a, an excessive amount of hours on specific recovery work because it's all kind of done at the same time. And assuming that a lot of you guys are juggling job, family, other responsibilities, like you want to find a way to maximize your time invested into your training window. And if your training allows you to get stronger, put on muscle, lose fat, and get mobile at the same time, that's probably the direction that most of us should strive to go for. If not everyone. Mm -hmm. Also, high protein intake helps a lot. Like if you don't track your protein or you're under eating on protein, so you weigh one gram per pound of body weight is great. I like one gram for probably like 1.4, somewhere in there. Um, but if you're under that one gram threshold, say you get like 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight, you're not gonna be able to train five days a week like the guy who's getting, or six days a week like the guy that's hitting his protein every single day and is you know, eating his, at a caloric maintenance or even a little bit of a surplus. That's gonna be the main thing. Um, you spoke on things like, like inside the gym. Like say, say you have knee pain and you're, you're struggling for your knees to recover. You've never trained your tibialis. You don't really bend your knees much. You're not getting much fluid in your knees. Your knees are gonna be sore. You know, if you take care of your knees, like they won't, like I always saying he doesn't have to warm up as much just because his body's strong in the range. He's, he's frequently getting fluid and movement through that area. So that, that's kind of how the body heals is blood flow, you know? Um, but if you cover the accessories, like your body will become more durable. Like we'll cover that more when we get to like the ATG mobility, 
joint health, all that nonsense. That, that's kind of what he's referring to. But outside the gym, it's like, hey, are you sleeping eight hours tonight? No, okay, that's, that's a, a box you can check. And if I get eight hours of sleep, what if I can fit a nap in on that? You know, what if I can, what, like, what, what are you eating? Are you eating Wendy's or are you eating like high quality nutrient dense food? Are you eating steak and vegetables and rice? Or are you like going and getting some trash? Because like even if the macros are the same, the, the higher quality food is going to help you recover more. Um, and then there's just like stress management outside the gym. So say like, you, I, 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 me, me, him, and him, we don't, we don't have kids, we don't have that much going on outside of training. But if you're, if you're someone who owns a business or you're extremely stressed out mentally all the time, your body can't necessarily differ the stress between training, um, relationship, whatever, whatever life stresses you have thrown at you. So you kind of have to learn you know, better coping mechanisms, better, better stress management. Do you journal? Do you practice gratitude? Do you meditate? Do you go outside and get in nature? Do you talk to your loved ones? Do you spend time with them? Like that's things I think a lot of people don't even think about and they miss, miss that huge mark. But that's, you know, after you talk to like your home and you're stressed out, like that, then you feel better. You know, you're not as, you're not stressed out. Like you go into the gym and you have 5,000 things in your mind and you're not focusing on your workout. It, you're not, you're not there. You're, you're not present. You're not, you're not fully tuned in. So like, your, your habits outside the gym, like, I mean, the, the stuff inside the gym is obviously important for recovery, but the stuff outside to just keep your headspace clear, your nutrition, your sleep, um, I think those are, you know, pr pretty important, if not the most important aspect of recovery. I think regularity with all those things, because doing all the, you can do all those things, but you do them one time on alternating weeks and they don't mean anything. If you yeah, hit protein you, one time in two weeks, it doesn't matter. You need to do it daily. You have to do it regularly. So like, you're, you're asking about training for both BJJ and um, like weightlifting. If you can't do both, trying to do each one really hard on the day that you feel like you can will get you nowhere. So if you want to be better at both, you have to start with each one maybe a little bit lower so that you can always do both. Like come in and lift less and maybe roll less rounds until you can build like the capacity for both because your body will adapt. I mean, there's pro athletes who, like, their entire job is to train for hours and hours a day. I mean, it's their job, but we're not trying to do that much. We're just trying to do a fraction. But you, ha you have to build a capacity. But if you, like, don't do things regularly, which could be any of those things, like sleeping, eating, like, just, you'd be surprised how much your metabolism will benefit from eating at the same times, every the day. same portions every day. Like if you try to make up at the end of every day with, oh, now I got to eat a huge meal because I didn't eat all day, you, you've already lost the battle. Like you, you need to be eating more regularly at smaller amounts opposed to, oh, I got to fit, I got to fit in all these grams of protein now. Like 300 grams of protein in one meal. Yeah. Like you, you got to do it regularly. Right. So even if you have to take a step backwards with everything, regular will set you up for failure, I mean to win. Like not being prepared is being prepared to fail. It sounds cliche, but it's so true because your body wants a rhythm. Like you don't, Consistency. You, you, don't get, yeah, you don't get better at anything if you do it half the time, one fourth of the time. Like, oh, well, now I gotta focus on it. It's like, you should have been, if, if you just do it a little bit, like you don't have to be perfect, but if you can just do it regularly, you'll get better at it. So. When it comes to recovery, it's all about adapting, like adapting to what you're doing. And if you don't do it regularly, you're never going to adapt. Like if you do an exercise you've never done before, like you're usually pretty sore from, like, I, like say, say you've squatted all your life, you do an ATG split squat for the first time, you've never trained your leg quad or your knee in that way, you're going to be weirdly sore from it. You know, you've never trained your tibias before, you do a, a hundred tibia raises, your tibias are going to be extremely sore, you know? So, but if you, like say, do tibia raises for six to seven weeks straight, on week seven, you don't, you're probably not sore anymore. I don't get sore that often. Um, I did lifted 700 for like six reps yesterday. My back's not sore, you know, but if that was me three years ago, that probably would have crippled me from doing it for one. You know, so you, you kind of adapt and that's, that's, kind of, that's what he's referring to. Like, yeah, I mean, if, if you're trying, like Jurassic change is never gonna be easy on your body. So, it, I mean, just for like longevity's sake of like being able not even like longevity of like injury wise, but to, to just be able to do it. Like you start slow, like, you know, and you throw in a, like, if you're having trouble recovering from like your workouts and jujitsu, then cut both in half. Like if you normally do four sets of squat, do two. If you normally do four sets of leg extension, do two. Like just cut everything in half. If you normally roll six rounds afterwards, try doing two or three, maybe like, Maybe don't roll it all twice a week. You can you know, make just, better progress doing that. Yeah, and you, you'll probably, because if you're 
feel like you're not recovering, and especially if you're getting like mentally burnt out, and you just continue destroying yourself, you're not. Yeah, you're, you're definitely moving backwards. Like because then you just don't go, and yeah. that's way backwards from at least going some. I did the past two meets. I did. I did Ghost Clash, and then I did the American Pro. For Ghost Clash, I was probably training six to seven hours a day. I would do like thirty working sets on SPD. It would be like a top single, eight triples, then I'd move on the bench, top single, seven sets of four, then I'm doing 10 singles on deadlift, and then I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna cry in the shower, and then I'm gonna go back and do my accessories. And you know, I did that, and I made, I made decent progress, but I think I totaled like 2,100 in the gym, and I got to the meet, and I totaled like 1,960. I got to the meet, I was beat up, I was tired, my shoulders hurt, my back hurt, I was mentally burned out. Um, for the American Pro, which is this past meet, I ended up hitting like a 60, 70 pound total PR. I trained maybe two to three hours a day of that, and I bought an Xbox, and I just learned to sit on my ass and chill out. Made way better progress. So doing more in the gym is not always, like, like if you, the point of the gym is like we come in here and kind of destroy ourselves a little bit so you can recover. And that's where getting stronger and muscle gain comes from. But if you destroy yourself, you don't recover. You destroy yourself, you don't recover. You destroy yourself, you don't recover. You're not getting anything done. Like you take a dime and you, and you grind and you grind and you grind and you grind and you grind. Like eventually it gets grinded to dust. You know, like you need to let that recovery period actually happen if you want to make progress. And when you have like dual athletes like him and him, that's a lot more to recover from someone who's doing one thing. You only have so much life force you can put into something or into numerous things, you know? So it's kind of like figuring out how to distribute that like more evenly. What are we drawing? If your baseline is here and you work out, you go here. You're now fatigued. You couldn't go back and do the same thing you did. Like if, if you deadlifted that morning, you couldn't go back and do the same thing. So you have to wait until you recover. Say that's two to three days. Now you're here. But if you went and worked out again here, you would have gone back down and you would have dropped the same amount. So now you're down here. You're gonna, you're gonna keep moving downwards instead of, you'll have a slight rebound and then come down. A slight rebound and then you'll come down. And your performance is gonna get worse and worse. Opposed to actually, like a actually recovering where you come down and then it, it's not going to be major but right above and then you come down and, right and above, then and right a little above, higher and then you come down and then you're right above and eventually this will look it's not always going to look like that because this is just the gym you never know you worked a double you missed some meals you broke up with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, whatever it may be. Your grandpa died. Like, yeah, like eventually, Life one of happens. these is like, even if you let yourself recover, you only come back up to right here this time. So, you know, now this like goes from here, so now it maybe comes down to here, but you know, it, it's gonna be more like a line like this. 